Landlocked Zimbabwe plunged into violent protest following the decision by government to increase fuel prices. Normalcy has since returned as President Emerson Nangagwa promised to hold officials and ordinary citizens who instigated the actions accountable. Calls for intervention on regional level were however made. But the chairperson of SADC clarified in an exclusive interview with NBC News that interventions are sought only after internal solutions fail. You see, what I have done as a chairman is to establish personal relationships. I can tell you, since I took over now, I have direct telephone numbers of about 10 presidents whoever I can just dial and they pick up and that we have been doing that. Even on the Zimbabwe question, they say I'm quiet. But the moment President Munangaka came back, he called me. Then he told me what he's going to do. I briefed him on the DRC issue. We are interacting. President Cyril maybe five times we talked to him this time. So I've established that kind of a thing where as a chairperson, we just have to decide on behalf of your country. Other countries must be consulted. So therefore, I have been consulting. I'm a consulting type. President Nangagwa's special envoy, Patrick Chinamasa, presented Dr. Gengob with a detailed report on the political situation in Zimbabwe during his visit to SADC headquarters in Gaborone. Meanwhile, SADC will continue to monitor the overall security situation in the region as a number of member states will face elections this year. During his address to the SADC Secretariat, President Gengob acknowledged efforts already made in member states like DRC and Madagascar. Therefore, we had for the first time in 60 years in Congo a peaceful transfer of power from one president to another one. That's a big achievement. In this regard, I wish to recognize the dedication and leadership of His Excellency Edgar Chako Mungu, President of the Republic of Zambia and Chair of the Open, as well as the personnel in regional structures who play a crucial role and continue to assist in ensuring that the regional region remains peaceful. Those Efforts have contributed to demanding deepening of democracy and good governance in the region, leading to the establishment of robust processes, systems, and institutions. Today's Africa third way is that we have to deal with processes, systems, and institutions. No individual anymore. Presidents must be presidents, the third way for us. They are not the extraordinary personalities. Founding fathers were. But what we have to do is to deal with processes. Electoral process must be foolproof. Governance processes and systems must be inclusive. And if we can have that right and help institutions, the courts, that in case of dispute, you go to that. And the ruling of that court will be accepted. Blanche Corres, NBC News.